I'm from a small town called Landenberg in Pennsylvania. Um, it's about an hour away from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and I live at home with my mom, or I have my mom, my dad, and an older sister. I started doing gymnastics when I was two years old. Um, my sister, she's three and a half years older than me. She was doing gymnastics too at the time, and so when my mom would bring her to the gym, she would also have to bring me. And so instead of just having me sit with her, like in the waiting room, she was like, I'm just going to let her go and do her own thing in the gym too. Mm -hmm. So um, I guess my sister is kind of the reason why I started doing gymnastics. So I started like at the age of two in like those little like preschool classes doing like handstands and cartwheels and stuff. I guess in a way it just started to become a routine where I was like constantly in the gym for four hours of day a day. And like that just became like the normal for me. Mm -hmm. There were times where I definitely did try other sports. Um, I did soccer around, I started a little bit later, probably when I was like five. And I did that up until middle school. But for some reason, I always came back to gymnastics. Mm -hmm. It just felt like home to me. Right off the bat, I fell in love with the sport. So in club gymnastics, I was state champion on beam in level eight, level nine, and level 10. Um, and then in college, I became an All-American on the balance beam. Um, my freshman year, I placed fifth in the nation. I think the most memorable mo moment of my career was probably that first beam routine that I did um, after coming back from beating cancer. I finally finished up all of my chemotherapy treatment January last year. Um, it was a home meet and it was against Brockport. It was right on that beam right there. <laughs> I think that was probably the most memorable moment because I was 100% nervous before I got on that beam. Like I was probably shaking a little bit, mm -hmm. but I controlled my, my butterflies enough to stay on the beam yeah. and do a pretty successful set. After I finished that routine, like I knew that like my entire team was sobbing. Like even before I got on the beam, some people were crying. And as soon as I like landed it, like everyone was clapping and cheering for me. And like my whole team like rushed over and like they gave me this big hug. Um, it was a very joyful moment. Um, a lot of excitement and um, I guess like in a way like, eh, like a little bit of relief kind of thinking like I did it like this is like what I've worked so hard for and like I was able to accomplish it and like get to this point. So I was very proud of myself and like everything that I've accomplished up until that point. Last year and this year she's built herself up so much from getting a cancer treatment. Um, it's like really inspirational to see that she's back where she was before and she's just as inspirational as she was when she was a freshman, if not more so, because she's overcome all of this adversity. That was definitely one of my goals, to get back to competing at the same level that I was before. There were definitely a lot of roadblocks. Um, there were times where I didn't think that I was going to be able to do it because it was just so challenging. But definitely having like my teammates there and my coaches and like all the support um, in the gym and outside of the gym definitely motivated me to like keep working towards it. Rachel's encountered more adversity than anyone ever should in a lifetime, and she has fought through so much. She's my hero in that aspect. She is so incredibly strong. She's gone through things that could break people, and it hasn't even left her with just a scratch. She, no matter what life threw at her, she just responded to it incredibly. And every day, she got stronger from it, and she never let anything that was bad happen to her bring her down. She's always been optimistic about it, and I think that's been really impactful and everyone around the herb that she's gone through so much and she's just had a smile and a brave face through it all. I never really had that doubt in my mind that I wasn't going to beat it because I've been through so many other things and this is just another roadblock that I had to pass. Right. So like I knew that going like into it when I got the uh, diagnosis that I was going to beat it. There wasn't a doubt in my mind. Track, I kind of joined, I mean, in middle school, you kind of try everything. I don't really know exactly why. I, I tried softball, which is also a spring sport. I tried softball when I was younger, and I didn't really like it. And I don't believe at my school that I was at in seventh grade that they had any other 
things for me to do in the spring, so I just kind of did track, and I only kind of, I high jumped, and I sprinted. I never threw, I didn't start throwing until my, like, end of junior year, like, seriously senior year of high school, so I've only been throwing for a few years. Um, before that, I was a sprinter and a high jumper, so I've only been really doing throwing, which is what I do now for, like I said, a couple years. I'm a thrower, and I love doing that, and I'm able to succeed in that, but, um, for field hockey, I my aunt was a high school and collegiate athlete for field hockey. Um, I always went to her games when I was younger. Um, she went to Oneana, which is 20 minutes from where I live. So I would go to all of her games, and I would always be able to support her, like, all in, all gung-ho. And so just seeing her, and then when I was in high school, at my one high school, they didn't have field hockey. So I never really grew up playing. I just grew up watching her. And then when I moved to the high school that I graduated from, they actually had field hockey. And I decided I didn't want to do cross country anymore. I didn't want to dance anymore. So I decided I was going to do field hockey. For field hockey, my aunt kind of told me. She gave me like a rundown saying like she thought that I could do it in college. And so I just kind of took her word on it. And I was like, well, if you think so, I think so also. And I mean, I was a starter pretty much all three of my years playing field hockey. And so I thought, well, if I can go from not playing to being a starter and maybe I can give it a shot and see how it goes. For field hockey, it's like completely different. In college, it's a lot more difficult than high school. Going from starting to not really playing at all was kind of difficult. It gives me more of a motivation to do my best at practice and when I do get playing time, like do the best that I can. And it's a learning experience because if I have a bad day at practice, I know that I can just get after it the next day and I don't, I like feeling like the pressure of having to like get it right and so when I do get playing time like I want to do my best and get whatever I can done and if I have a bad game it's just good for me to have that feeling so I know next time what I need to do because I kind of savor like every minute I have and I'm sure that everyone even if you're a starter like you save every minute you have because there's only a certain amount of time that you're going to get and you're all, all four of your years so we have I mean we have like an actual like playbook like, kind of difficult especially because like we have presses, we have formations, we have actual things rather than just like passing the ball and shooting and defending. It's a lot more like uh, nitpicky, I guess, or like very detailed. Like it's it's not just a game that you play in like physical education class. Like you just, it it's, has a whole thing to it. So that was definitely difficult coming in and like realizing like this is not just a game that you can play, like it's serious. My coaches, both track and, um, track and field hockey, they know that when I'm in whatever sport season that is, I'm just with that sport. So like right now I'm with track, so I practice with track and I don't practice in field, with field hockey. But when I have the time, I do go and support them at like conditioning or lift or practice. Like I'll go outside with them and just be there to support them. But I don't actually practice because that would just be a lot on my body. But yeah, I try to be as supportive as I can. So okay. like I go to track practice from November to May and practice and that's that and I don't go to field hockey and practice. The only times I'll go to field hockey and practice during track season is to go watch them and that's only if I'm done with, with track. I never skip track for field hockey and I don't skip field hockey for track. Very early on I think we saw a little bit of adversity with her coming off of field hockey. And, uh, they, they had a successful year uh, field hockey wise. And, they were in the ECAC tournament, which for me that delayed her coming to track practice. You know, we start in mid-October, and their season went through about mid-November. Um, so because of that success, she lost a little bit more time in the fall with track and field and with our practices. You know, so one of the one of the things that she faced very early on in the fall was uh, trying to figure out how to catch up. You know, like trying to understand that. You know, she's a two-sport athlete, and there's going to be things that she might have to do more. Um, she might have to put in a little bit more effort and a little bit more mental reps um, to get back to where some of her teammates are. You know, her teammates have had three or four weeks ahead of her. Uh, and, you know, very early on that first week, I think I saw her struggle a little bit with that fact, and, and we even talked about it. You know, we sat down and we talked about it. and talked about how how she felt like she was behind, how she felt like she needed to catch up and, and those types of things. And uh, I think one of the things that she did to work through that is uh, communication. You know, and, and that's one of the things that 
that I harped on a little bit uh, when I first got here you know, is we got to be great communicators. Because whenever I'm in the sport that I'm in, like in the season, I am just so like devoted to that sport. And it's not because I don't care about the other one, but I'm just so engulfed in it. So like right now, track is like everything that I do, but in the fall field hockey, like I just am so engulfed in it. So I don't really think that I love one more than the other one because I just, it depends on the season I'm in. Like I literally just engulf myself in it. Uh, I would say that I started playing between um, 14, 15, you know, probably 14, yeah. You know, like I came, like I, growing up I played soccer, not basketball. So um, I came to play soccer and then uh, I think they have a couple other guys playing basketball in the other corner of the of this park and then um, they were short one. So, but the soccer ball wasn't around then. Like I, I think we were waiting on the guy that you know brings the soccer ball. So I had to complete the other guys to play basketball as they jo asked me to join them. You know, I think that was my first time playing basketball. After the first time, I think I kind of loved it. You know, I fell in love with the game because after that first time, people were like very surprised that that was my first time playing basketball. They thought it was a uh, like I've been playing this before, you know. So that kind of like, you know, meant a lot to me, like, you know, for them to think that way. And then uh, I started, you know, playing with them again, you know. I became involved. Like I get actual, you know, satisfaction playing basketball, uh, you know. It, I got so much engaged because it became like a, you know, source of happiness to me. I'm trying to focus on the hoop. I think it's some sort of, you know, distractions to take you away from other stuff that is going on in your life. So, you know, I think, you know, and also being part of a team that try to achieve the same goal, you know, kind of helped me to stay focused. You know. Basically, I when I came to the U.S., mm -hmm. that's when I started taking it, to, you know, uh, too seriously. Because then I realized, like, I have potential to, like, uh, to play at a college level. You know, that's when, and I realized, you know, how, you know, how cool it would be, you know. So, that's when I started taking it too seriously, you know, spending more time in the gym. So, I think uh, when I first came, I was practicing with, uh, you know, like, with my school team. You know, that was in high school, senior year. And then, I was able to, like, you know, like, I think I was playing around and I was able to dunk, like, right while standing on the rim, I was able to go up and dunk the ball. And I, did, I think the coach was like out there watching and he was like, hey, do that again. And I did it again and he was so amazed. And then, you know, I feel like I didn't know what I was doing. Like I know like basically I was dunking the ball, but I didn't know that like, it's something that other people cannot do. You know, so I think he was able to spot that talent and then uh, was able to like, you know, you know, try sort of take me seriously. Then. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, it felt like you know he could invest time into me just to get me to the next level, mm -hmm. which I felt like actually helped me a lot too. So through the process, that's when I realized that there are things that I could do that not every other person could do. So yeah. kind of kind of encouraged me to do to keep playing.